I'm standing outside Court Gate. This was one of the main entrances into Tavistock Abbey. So I guess this is a very good place to start the Abbot's Way walk. One main feature of Dartmoor are these granite crosses. These, were, these have been installed over the centuries, so some of them could be over a thousand years old, and some of them could have been put in by the Victorians. This is Whitchurch Down Cross, it's just outside Tavistock. The records say that this was put in, may have been put in around 1310. So when people were traveling to and from Tavistock, this would have been the first or last cross that they would have seen. And of course, this would have, a thousand years ago, this would have been just a, a muddy track. So this is the first of several granite crosses I'm going to see on my walk. So I think the next one is uh, Pixie Cross, which is on a golf course, but I think there is public access to the cross. So I think this is Pixie's Cross. It's the, the next cross on the Abbot's Way out of Tavistock. So many centuries ago, these would have been very important way markers. Today, it's, it, this is all a, a very carefully man, maintained golf course and tarmac roads. But hundreds of years ago, this would have been very wild moorland. So now I'm going to continue on and go to my first tour. Here are some of the famous Dartmoor ponies. Along the southwest peninsula of England, there are three quite high areas of moorland, which are Bodmin Moor, Dartmoor, and Exmoor. And these were formed millions of years ago by a chain of volcanoes. And I think the Scilly Isles off the coast of Cornwall was formed in the same volcanic uh, period. And over the years, these gradually, the lava cooled down and formed into granite. And over the years, all the other soil eroded away. And what's left now, uh, what we call tors. So the word tor, spelt T-O-R, is an old English word meaning a rocky pinnacle or a rocky hill, possibly of Celtic origin because apparently there are words in uh, Welsh and Scottish Gaelic that are very similar to the word tor. And this is pewtor I'm standing on at the moment. So now I'm going to head north. I hope to find my third cross. I think it's Windy Post Cross. I'm not going to say it's a nice day today because that's tempting fate. This is Windy Post Cross. According to the English Heritage website, it's, it was put there in the 15th century. So now it's just a little walk now into the nearby village of Princetown. I've just arrived at Merivale, where there's a, a lot of standing stones believed to be from the Neolithic 
period, which is about 2500 BC onwards. So there are two rows of stones running west to east. This is the south row, just over there is the north row. And so these could have been installed about four and a half thousand years ago. This is halfway along the south row. This is, I believe they call this a kist. It's a stone lined burial chamber because prehistoric people, they really worshiped their ancestors. They believe that their spirits protected them. So there's a lot of these kists on Dartmoor. I hope to find another one this afternoon near a place called Giant's Basin. And just south of the two rows of stones, this is another kist. So I guess the stone on the right would have, been, would have been the capstone that would have been placed right on top of the chamber. Very close to the two rows of standing stones, there's a small circle of standing stones here. There's a very impressive large standing stone here. So I guess many thousands of years ago, this would have had great significance. So time to continue on to Prince Town. So here I am in Prince Town. Dartmoor is quite famous around the world because it was the location for the Sherlock Holmes story, The Hound of the Baskervilles. When Sir Arthur Conan Doyle came to Dartmoor in 1901 to travel around for inspiration for the story, he stayed at the Grand Duchy Hotel, which is now the National Park Visitor Centre. So this is where he would have wrote the book when he was staying at Dartmoor. So my next stop is South Hennessy Tor. It's about a mile away in the distance. My mistake, this is South Hessery Tor. I was watching a video on YouTube by a chap, he's called Nick, a bloke in the woods, I think. He does a lot of hiking in this area. And he came up here and he pointed out that on the top of the tall, there's a big lump of metal, a big lump of iron sticking out of one of the rocks. And nobody knows what it's there for. It's always been there. And so the, the rumor is that it could be Excalibur. So anyone who can pull this out could be the next King of England. So I'm carrying on now towards my next cross. It's called Nun's Cross or Seward's Cross and it's about a mile or so further south.
So I believe this cross has two names. It's known as either Nun's Cross or Seward's Cross. And the earliest record of this was in 1240. So now I'll be heading off towards the Giant's Basin. I can see the sea shining over there in the, on the horizon. That'll be Plymouth, I guess, over there. So I'm, I'm slightly off the route at the moment because the Giant's Basin is not actually on the Abbot's Way, but I've seen a couple of interesting documentaries about it, so I thought I'd just go and have a look while I'm here. This is the Drizzlecombe Bone. It's possibly Bronze Age. It's, uh, it's about 4.2 metres high. It must weigh between three and four tonnes. And I think this is probably the biggest standing stone on Dartmoor. So this area, there's, there's quite a few prehistoric standing stones in uh, cairns and such. So there's another standing stone and a row of smaller stones over there, which I'm going to have a look at. Then I'm, I'm going to now have a look at the Giant's Basin. This is the Giant's Basin. It probably used to be a, a ken. I think it would have been a, a kind of burial chamber. But unfortunately over the years it's been heavily damaged. So there's just a, just a mound to see nowadays. So leading on from the drizzle come bone. There's a small row of stones leading to another standing stone. So the, the reason it's called the drizzle come bone, the drizzle come is a small stream in a small valley just to the east of here. And I guess they call it a bone because from the side it looks like a bone. I know there's a kissed summer around here which is in very good condition but I'm not very sure where it is. So I'm just going to have a little look around, see if I can see it. So this is a third standing stone with another smaller row of stones leading up to it but unfortunately I can't find the kist so I think it's time to continue back and try and find the abbot's way again so there's still some signs of where people used to live here this definitely looks like a a round house which they probably lived in in their Bronze Age. There's a place to, on the other side of Dartmoor called Grimm's Pound, which I hope to visit one day. That's a, a big, like a, a Bronze Age or Iron Age uh, ruins of a settlement. So hopefully one day I can see that. So now I have to try and cross over the River Plym and find the Abbot's Way again. So I'm back on the Abbot's Way. It's about 20 past three now. It'll be quite dark by five. So I've got about another hour's walk in, I guess, and then I'm going to find somewhere to camp for the night. 
the Abbot's Way can get a bit patchy in some places, so it's always best to bring a map and compass. I'm just following a 4x4 track now to a place called Broad Rock. I'm heading down to Erm Head now, which is the source of the river which flows down to Ivy Bridge in South Dartmoor. And when I get there, I think I'm going to look for a nice place to camp, hopefully by a running stream. So I've got my drinking and cooking water for the night. So I've just got to look around here for a nice little spot to put the tent up. I've put the tent up in a very sheltered space but I, I don't think it's going to be very windy tonight, but I don't, don't want to take any chances. So time to get into, the, into bed before it gets dark and then carrying on to Buckfast Abbey tomorrow. So good night. Tuesday the 19th of November. So for about a mile or so, I'll be following the river. Um, although I guess up here, it's still a stream and in about a mile or so, I hope to link up with the Two Moors Way. So a lot of people say that Dartmoor stream water is quite safe to drink, and it probably is, but I always carry a small water filter with me, just in case, because the last thing I want while camping on Dartmoor is a stomachache all night. This stone marks the spot where two long distance trails meet up. This is the, uh, the Two Moors Way. It's the Devon Coast to Coast Walk. It starts down in uh, Wembury on the south coast near uh, Plymouth. And then it goes north all the way to Lynmouth on the North Devon coast. It's about 117 miles long. And now for the next couple of miles, it it shares the same route as the Abbot's Way, so I'm now going to head up there and, and head towards Avon Dam Reservoir. I don't know if the camera can make it out, but on the other side of the valley there's a couple of large stone circles, and those were probably Bronze Age settlements. hoping to find the Clapper Bridge down here in the valley. This is a Clapper Bridge. The the clappers are the, uh, the slabs of stone on top. So these could be thousands of years old, but I read somewhere that this one is a relatively recent bridge. So now I carry on down to the reservoir. This is Huntingdon Cross. So the word Huntingdon, the, uh, the D-O-N at the end of place names quite often mean it's an old English word for a hill such as Hoddesdon or Swindon. So this could have been the Hunter's Hill many years ago but there's different theories how it got its name. So this is the last cross I'm going to see on Dartmoor. The, there is one more cross right outside Buckfast Abbey. So I'm going to head up onto the hill now and then I, I should start heading down into Buckfast. This is one thing I like about Dartmoor walks. The last bit is always downhill with a really nice view.
And there's the tower of Buckfast Abbey just down in the in the at the bottom of the hill. So here's the final granite cross and the official end of the Abbot's Way.